بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد والذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله الله سبحانه وتعالى سند النبي فوي primary objective so that this deen can come alive and it will obliterate all other forms of evil when Nabi alayhi salatu wassalam came in the ayyam e jahiliya shirk polytheism idol worship in the kaaba they were idols was common people used to eat carrion unlimited polygamy female infanticide burying the daughters alive intoxication homicidal abuse of women and girls where women were considered a liability nabi ali salam did away with all of this and brought pure deen where even to the female fraternity he had given honor jannah lies below the feet of your mother khayarukum khayarukum li nisaikum the best among you are those who are good to your women folk so deen is pure it is pristine we should not contaminate it with other isms other way of lives other holidays around the corner is halloween it is not appropriate for any person of iman to imitate any form of the kuffar in batil and unfortunately if it's a normal secular holiday we take time off as for dini holidays we find it hard to close our businesses we find it hard to take off from work what is a child learning what impression are we imprinting on our generations to come the deen no the bila is not important everything else is that's how we warn by allah wala tattabi ahwa'um amma ja'aka min al-haqq and do not follow the vain desires diverging from the truth that has been come to you so allah has commanded us that whatever the ignorant the jahils the miserables the ahli batil are doing do not go close to that wa in tuti' akthar man fil ard if you decide you want to follow them then remember what's going to happen you will look an sabilillah they'll take you away from your objective they'll take you away from allah so in the narration of uh, ibn abbas where ibn suria and ibn qais they said to each other let us go to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and misguide him from his religion so they went to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said oh muhammad we are scholars we are noblemen we are chiefs we will follow you and the, the tribe will follow but is enmity with some people so we will refer judgment to you in this matter you need to rule in our favor if we have an agreement then we will accept your way of life so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed wa nihkum bainahum bima anzal allah wa la tattabi ahwa'ahum allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wahi in allah it sent revelation and do not follow their vain desires and be very careful and weary because that will turn you away from what allah has sent so we have to be very very careful not to be inclining to the way of life of the people of batil af hukm al jahiliya yabghun do you people to the people have an inclination to the judgment of the days of ignorance who can make a better judgment in call than allah wa man ahsanu min allahi hukma so nabi ali salam had come to bring pure deen they will want you to abandon your deen by dangling the carrot and showing you alternatives what the kathirum min ahli alkitab many people of the book wish they could turn you back to kufr hasadan min indi anfusikum 
that they have this malice and envy and due to this after the truth is clear to them it is apparent it is in front of them so in the reward of Umar radiallahu anhuma man tashabba bi qawmin fa'u minhum whoever imitates a nation is part of that nation Allah Munawi has mentioned hey تَزَيَّ فِي ظَاهِرِي بِزَيِّهِمْ وَسَارَ بِسِّيرَتِهِمْ وَدِهِمْ فِي مَلْبَسِهِمْ وَبَعْضِ أَفَالِهِمْ That imitation, imitating any group is imitating their clothing, their external, their action, their appearances, their guidance, their instructions. مُلَى الْقَيْرِ رَحْمُ اللَّهِ has explained مَنْ شَبَّهَ نَفْسَهُ بِالْكُفَّارِ مَثَلًا مِنَ الْلِبَاسِ Whoever imitates the kuffar, whether it's in their clothing or in their disobedience or in their transgression or in their hypocrisy, he should consider himself among those people. And if he follows the people of truth, Ahlul Tasawwuf, Was Sulaha, the pious people, then consider yourself to be in that category on the day of Qiyamah. Ibn Taymiyyah has explained that Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal on this narration has shown that it is haram to imitate the kuffar مَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ that if you incline yourself to their way of life then consider yourself part of them and as Abdullah ibn Amr مَنْ بَنَا بِأَرْضِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ whoever lives in the vicinity area country of disbelievers and he imitates their celebrations, their new year festivals, their carnivals and if that is where he lives he will be resurrected with them on the day of Qiyamah. So we have to be very careful on what actions Al Qadi Abu Ya'la used to explain will be the Hada Ihtaja Ghayru Wahidim min al Ulama Allah Karahiati. That some ulama are unanimous that imitating any form of a kafir is very disastrous, detrimental, and it is disliked. So even in Deen, tenth of Muharram is an ibadat, but we have been encouraged to oppose even in ibadat khaliful mushrikin oppose the mushriks lengthen your beards shorten your moustaches the fatwa of Darul Joban if a Muslim shaves or trims his beard less than a first length is regarded as a fasik transgressor and to read salat behind such a person is makru in one ibarat somewhere else is mentioned that it is makru'e tahrimi and he cannot make imamat for farz salah it is makru'e tahrimi even tarawi he cannot perform we should not allow such people to take the musalla Mufti Rashid Ahmed Jani used to also explain he says that a person of this category even if he had to give adhan in iqama it will be mustahab and desirable to repeat the adhan so it may seem like simple things but these hold weight in the eyes of Allah. Hafiz ibn Ajr has explained in his shah of Bukhari that the trait of the fire worshippers and we'll come to bonfires now inshallah where the fire worshippers they were synonymous for shaving and growing their moustaches. So Shabbu imitating and ulama have gone into detail. What we need to realize is Allah has chosen me, Allah has appointed me, Allah has anointed me, Allah has handpicked me, Allah has selected me, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu has nominated me for the vice chairancy on earth to represent Allah in His Rasul. It is up to us to come forward and be ready to sacrifice for Allah. Deen and the effort of Deen is important, it is imperative for the preservation of dunya and akhirat. 
So there was a pencil maker who took the pencil aside, was ready to package it. So there's five things you need to know. If I send you out in the world, I'll tell you, make sure you make a note of this. Number one, you are able to do many things, great things, but you need to allow yourself to be in the hand of someone else. So number one, we need to be in the hands of Allah. Turn to Allah, trust in Allah, have yaqeen in Allah. See what Allah does. Number two, we need to hand ourselves to a sheikh. We need to spend time in the company of the ulama and follow mashwara, istikhara. Come unto this hand and see what will happen. Number two, he advised the pencil, you will experience a lot of painful sharpening from time to time. But that will make you a better pencil. Be ready for sacrifice and mujahada. Walladheena jahadu fina. Number three, you will be able to correct any mistake you make because you're a pencil. So we need to make toba. Wa khayrul khattain at-tawabun. So we need to make toba and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number four, the most important part of you is what's inside of you. Al-Rahiru unwainul batin, our external will tell us what's internal. So our outward lifestyle, our dressing, our appearance, our importance of sunnah. Do I sit on the dasarkhan and eat or do I sit on the table and eat? Do I prioritize a toothbrush or prioritize a miswak? Number five, on every surface you are used on, you must leave your mark. Whatever the condition is, continue writing. So that is istiqama. No matter what conditions and halat and circumstances, these are signs of qabulia. So Halloween, its roots, its evil, it's connected to the sa Satan, the satanic church. And uh, Anton LaVey who was the founder of the Church of Satan, 1966. And uh, nowadays you have churches opening everywhere for devil worship, the satanic church. And he was a prominent satanist in that cult. And he had authored several books, the satanic Bible, satanic ritual, satanic witch, the devil's note, just alone hearing these words can tell us. So he wrote in one of his books, the satanic Bible, after one's own birthday, Two major satanic holidays are of importance. One of them was the Witches' Night, which is a German annual event. And the second one, which is on the May 1st, and the second one is Halloween, 31st of October. So even the Church of Satan recognizes Halloween as an important date. And they say it embraces ancient practices and inner darkness and people get into the pool of the shadow world. So in itself it's satanic. Then going back history 2000 years the Samhain Celtics they believed on the 31st of October that uh, spells the dead used to walk, immortal spirits it was a gateway. These are all pagan roots and traditions Part of this tradition is to wear a costume. Now somebody is wearing a witch figure, which is Sihar, Jadu, Black Magic, Schools of Witches, Harry Potter, Evil, Darkness, Bats, Black Cats. So somebody is imitating Satan, Iblis. Imagine how dark the hearts are that people are proud about that. Vampires is satanic, the concept initiated where you needed to sacrifice blood. So they call them vampires because you give blood to the devil, to Satan. So shaitan's object is what you read to shaitan, ayyudillahum dalalim ba'idah. He wants to take you away from Allah, from akhirat. So Allah is instructed, la ta'budi shaitan. Don't worship Iblis. Don't get caught, la yaftinannakum shaitan. He's going to trap you, you're going to start following his footsteps. So what? Don't follow his footsteps. And don't let him stop you from the truth. You're supposed to be going east, but you're going west. He will stop you. And he will inspire you. 
You know, when a person goes under the footsteps of shaitan and inspires, they say the west is so dark, that's where the sun loses its light. And the east got so much light, that's where the sun gets its light, that's where the sun rises. So the costumes itself, people are donning in the garb of Iblis, and they have pride and they boast about it, and they think so they are accomplishing any, uh, something, but actually they destroy themselves. Secondly, trick or treating, which has also become very common. So the word itself, trick or treating, is it a trick or is it a treat? So this was an ancient custom, it was called Solim. The dredge would go house to house on the 31st of October and demand specific types of food. If you gave the food, then you will be relieved of sickness and whatever else it is. But it's not only about that. After that, they started becoming violent and they were extorting people. So number one is they would cause carnage. It was a form of bribery. It was a form of begging. So when a person goes house to house, he's becoming a beggar and he's opening a door of poverty. And in those days, you needed to give sadaqah, charity, in the name of the devil. Charity in the name of the devil. Then pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns. So he was a thief, he, he stole, he got caught, he made a deal with the devil, there's different stories about him. And his soul was lingering according to their selves. In reality, he was a Satanist and the pumpkins are promoting Satanism. Then bobbing of apples, if we look at that, the cells believed that there was some divinity, some connection, and uh, just cutting the apple open in Samhain and Halloween, we will notice that uh, the star inside the apple. So concerning the history of the apple and the love of dunya, the five-pointed star pentagram, it's associated with Satanism and the occult. And even if you look at apples in heavy metal videos and uh, music videos, then apple is significant as well. Then the Roman and Celtic pagan traditions also have human sacrifice rituals connected to that. And the apple originally in mythology in the Greeks and the Romans, it was a symbol of the goddess Pomona. And uh, it was called the love fruit, but it's not love, it's love for dunya and the love of dunya will take you out of Jannat, means while you're in dunya, it'll take you to Jahannam. How it deprived your forefather, it'll deprive you of a greater Jannah, which is eternal. Even in spells and rituals, whether it's uh, Garden of Eden to Snow White, uh, we can see it, it's, it's verbal, it's clear. And they used it as a ritual. And in those days, they used to force villagers to bob apples from cauldrons of scalding hot liquid, and their faces would get scalded or decapitated and thrown into the burning wicker if they refused. Then bonfires, that's fire worship, candles, it's devil, fire dancing, it, it happened in the pagan days. And uh, bonfire originally comes over from the word bone fire, where animals' bones were put into it and animals were sacrificed in the name of evil spirits. And that time the great horn god of the cells, which is Aka Baal, Baal is known as Iblis Shaitan. So they used to sacrifice it. And on the birth of Nibir alayhi salam, a thousand year old fire was extinguished. So the fire worshippers all just connected to Shaitan and Iblis. Then fortune telling in Europe, that became very common. This night also was a night of fortune telling. And then the, the costumes of witches, now witches fly, so drugs again, that concept. Then witches jadu, black magic, ghosts, skeletons. So the Roman Catholic and Anglican churches on All Saints Day, November the 1st, they brought that in. And uh, the, they believed that before the beliefs, so the, the, the Christians, to get rid of this superstition, they call it All Hallows Eve, which was the 31st of October, which is a Christian festival. Then it became Halloween. 
So to outdo this here, to, to honor saints, um, the church initiated the, the state here. So we find that it's filled with customs, it's filled with battle. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The amal for today is, Nabi alayhi salam asked, that should I not show you bi nisa'ikum fil jannah, a woman who is a jannati, kullu wadudin waludin, that female that is very loving, gives birth, a lot of children, idha ukhdibat, whether she gets angry, she makes her husband angry, there is a dispute between her and her husband, she says, hadhi yadi fi yadik, yes my hand, yes your hand, let's make peace, I'm not gonna rest, until we make peace. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.